Hey everybody, welcome to GTech, and today I'm continuing my little side series called Talking Tech with Tubers, in which I actually sit down and I interview some of the really big names in the YouTube tech space. I basically just ask them a few questions about themselves, their channel, what really got them started on YouTube, and where their interest from technology sort of stemmed from. And I've had some awesome guests in the past, including Zach Nelson from Jerry Rig Everything, and Michael Fisher from Mr. Mobile, two awesome YouTube channels that I absolutely recommend. And today I'm joined by a new guest, and I'm actually really excited to talk to him because his channel falls a lot more in line with the sort of content that I make. So without further ado, I'm super excited to introduce none other than Zach from Zach's Tech Turf. So I'll let him take it away. Hey everyone, thanks GTech for having me on here. My name is Zach and I run a PC building YouTube channel called Zach's Tech Turf. And I literally just got done filming a video with this gaming PC. So I actually decided to keep it on the desk because it kind of feels weird to record a video without a gaming PC next to me. So hopefully that's not weird and you guys are okay with that. What got you interested into tech? Was it always PC tech that interested you? Yeah, it was definitely always PC tech that interests me because my parents when like two to three decades ago when I was a really little kid uh, they ran a PC building and PC consulting business out of the basement of their house and that's kind of how I started with running a PC building and PC consulting business out of the basement of my house I kind of just look at it as this is this YouTube channel is the 2021 version of what they were doing two to three decades ago uh, and since unfortunately both of them passed I kind of feel like I'm carrying on what they originally started. What gets you the most hyped about new PC components or advancements in PC technology? So I don't really get excited anymore about the real high-end components uh, because most of the high-end components that get sent to me or the ones that I purchase, they just, they're, they're tools to me at this point. I need them in my editing PC. I need them in my Twitch live streaming PC and whatnot. I don't really get excited about that anymore. What really excites me these days is when a PC component launches or gets announced and you know that it's going to be a killer price to performance component because that instantly just gets me super excited to create the next best price to performance gaming PC video here on YouTube. What does your personal gaming and editing machine look like? Right now I have two main PCs, one here at the studio for editing and I don't ever game here. And then I also have one over at my house, which is like 10 minutes away from my studio here. And that one's used for both video editing and gaming. The one here in the studio is in the Corsair 280X. It's rocking a Ryzen 9 3900X, 32 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 3080 Founders Edition. And then the one at home is an ITX build actually in the Cooler Master NR200P. It's rocking an i9-10 850K, 32 gigs of RAM again, and then a Gigabyte RTX 3070. What gear do you use to film? There's a ton of gear here, and it's probably not all worth mentioning, but as far as camera goes, right now I'm shooting on a Sony a6400 in 4K. My main B-roll camera is another Sony a7 III, and then I have other various Sony mirrorless cameras around the studio here for my Twitch live streams. And every single one of them has a Sigma lens hooked up to it, different focal lengths for depending on what the shot is or whatever. And then for lights, I'm using a much cheaper uh, aperture alternative. They're called the Godax or Godox SL60W. They only cost like 150 bucks, but they're as nice as like the $800 aperture lights or whatever. I have three of them in the studio so far, like the one main light that's right here on me, and then the light that's actually making this white wall blue. And they're just so good. I want like six of them though around here. That they're, they're just awesome for the price. What advice would you give to a small tech channel just starting out or like me? It really depends on what type of channel you are going for because everyone has different goals on YouTube and you can either go the more casual like hobby route just to explore your creativity and whatnot or you can go the more serious business I want to make a profit style route and I can't speak to the first one because I started Zach's Tech Turf from day one trying to turn this into a profitable business. But if that's the case you're on, and if you're looking for some specific advice for a PC building YouTube channel, I would really recommend just trying to find a system that allows you to make your videos for free in terms of money, not time, obviously. So if you wanna get into PC building on YouTube, which like GTech does, 
You need to find the system where you can spend $500 on the gaming PC even before you have a single sponsor or anybody sending you parts and you just pay all $500 of that PC by yourself. You need to be able to sell that PC for at least $500. And then in turn, you essentially didn't pay any money for making that YouTube video aside from time. And that way you can continue to funnel your videos. You're basically funneling your fans, showing them that the content that they want to see. And you just keep that system rolling, man. What do you do with all the hardware that you put into your PC builds? Uh, this goes back to the question that I just answered. I just sell the entire build. When I first started my YouTube channel out, I tried to like mix and match, match components, like reuse the RAM or reuse the CPU for the next uh, build guide. But if you do that, I wish I would have discovered this first. If you do that, then you're just going to end up with a ton of extra cases or case fans or like odds and ends of these PC builds, and then you can't sell them. So I would highly recommend just selling them all intact. And what I've been personally doing, since I don't necessarily need the money from each PC after each video right away anymore, uh, but I definitely recommend starting out that way. What I do now is I kind of just let them stockpile and because like two months ago, I let 14 PCs stack pile and then I just put all 14 PCs on the market right away and they all sold within nine days. So that's much more efficient, at least in my head, uh, instead of just constantly selling a PC, constantly talking to people on Facebook Marketplace and whatnot. I just let them all stockpile and then just try and sell them all as fast as I possibly can. What is your video making routine? How do you stay organized with each step? So I'm actually a huge advocate of a platform called Notion. It, it essentially runs my life, definitely my YouTube channel. And it's basically just a huge database that you can put anything into. So like note taking, you can build charts, like super complex form formulas in those charts, like pages within pages. You can make them externally facing on the web if you want to create just a quick, simple web page and whatnot. I would highly recommend checking out Thomas Frank's 20 minute notion video. He's like a productivity type YouTuber and he made a 20 minute video about how he organizes his entire YouTube process all the way from brainstorming and researching to video uh, filming and editing. I still like basically his entire routine is what uh, obviously, I, I have it customized a little bit to ZTT, but I would highly recommend checking out that video for organization. It's awesome. What is one device that you use in your video making process which you could not live without? Now, obviously, you can live without anything for video editing, but I would say my MVP component is this Razer Naga mouse. Hopefully the camera can pick that out. This is the Naga Pro wireless, but specifically the 12 button panel on the side. These types of mice are made for MMO games like World of Warcraft, but they end up being really good for video editing. So this is the Naga Pro wireless. I have two other versions of this mouse as they've been released over the last like six or seven years or so. So I have this one here in the studio. I have one at home for video editing as well. And then I also as a backup because I don't want to go back to editing without 12 buttons on my mouse anymore. What did you do before YouTube? Uh, I was in the Air Force for eight years. I started as an electronic warfare technician working on cargo airplanes, and then I moved towards cybersecurity. I joined the Air Force right out of high school and I'm definitely happy with starting my adult life that way. I went to a lot of cool places, went to a couple not so great places like Afghanistan and whatnot, but overall it was definitely a really solid foundation to starting my adult life and would highly recommend it if you're the type of person that would fit well in the military. <laughs> What is your taste in songs? Honestly, the only type of music that I listen to is anything that's like pump up music. So that's typically that typically ends up being rock or rap because I only listen to music whenever I'm in the gym lifting weights or when I'm like on the way to my studio here and just trying to get like in the right mindset, trying to get amped up for the work day. But that's all I really listen to, man. Thanks again for having me, G-Tech. I appreciate you having me on the show. Keep crushing those PC building videos and also your interview videos. I saw you did one with Mr. Mobile and then Jerry Rig Everything. That's awesome. Congrats to you for that. I'm excited to see who you get next. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks for watching. All right, so you heard it first here, folks. That was Zach from Zach's Tech Turf. And Zach, if you're watching this, thank you so much once again for agreeing to do this. I always love doing these sorts of interviews with people in the tech YouTube space. 
get a little bit of an idea of what kind of goes on in their head when they're making videos, kind of their video making process. And I really enjoy learning about their backstories, what they were like before they started doing YouTube and what really got them into making videos. And that's because a lot of people tend to fetishize online celebrities, such as, you know, tech YouTubers, for example, and they just kind of view that person as the personality themselves uh, being associated with this channel. They're not really thinking about what they are individually as a person, what kind of makes them them. So you got to have those things go hand in hand. You got to have the actual personality themselves and what makes them them alongside their brand, their channel, their whole, you know, online identity. So learning more about that first half really helps you better understand what drives these people to make the content that they do and where that interest kind of stemmed from. And another thing to keep in mind is that these personalities all started from square one, just like everyone else has. They were all small YouTubers at one point, kind of, you know, just like myself. But anyways, that's just about going to do it for now. Zach, thank you so much once again for the awesome words of wisdom and encouragement. Hearing things like this from the people that I look up to honestly really motivates me to push for the top and make my content better with every single new video that I make. But anyways, that's just about going to do it for now. So if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed down below because I love making this stuff for you guys. And as always, have a good one. Honey, I'm a